Well, tonight on the podcast, ladies and gentlemen, you know, the Democrats once again are concerned about black men coming up in the 2024 election. Understand places like this, the Philip Scott podcast, you will get the pulse of what's happening in black America, not your boule uh, media organizations that feel like they know black folks. Cause they, you know, they don't know black folks. Cause all they're going to do is insult them. When someone's insulting you or intelligence, instead of just presenting information and actually being real with you and understanding where you're coming from, because they're part of that particular community and not separated from the community. That's when you know you're in a good place. So the heel, the mainstream media organization put out about the advocates are urging political leaders to prioritize black male voters. And let's get into this because I, I, I we want to know how you're going to prioritize black male voters. Okay. So they worry about black male voters uh, to keep them from staying home in election day, 2024. The greatest fear is from what they're saying now is not that you're going out and vote for Donald Trump, which some of you may do that, but they worried that you have checked out the process. Now, why are they worried about that? Have your life been better three years of Joe Biden? That's the question for black men and black people. Has your life been better? Many of you have went to the grocery store to shop for Thanksgiving. There's a report that just came out that 25% price increase has happened on all the Thanksgiving food that a lot of you have bought. I said last night in the podcast, my wife spent $416 on food and normally it's like for the holiday, maybe $175 at the most. And she spent $416. You have people like Boulay Martin out here that will tell you about all the bills that, that Biden passed, but it don't matter what bill you pass. It's what's happening in your everyday life. I don't care about your infrastructure. If my food is high, I, I don't, I don't care about your roads and bridges. If the gas is high, if the rent's high, if the interest rates is high and, and, and making everything not affordable for the average citizen in this country, we don't care about your bills. The only bills that we care about is the ones that are going to quickly get to the American people and relieve us of some of the issues and problems. Now check this out. So the Democrat party is supposed to be the party of regulations. Why haven't they came in with a bill to regulate rent? Why they haven't came in with a bill to regulate these prices? Why are they allowing the, the, the interest rates to be so high? Now I know why they claim they did it. They say, Oh, well, we got too much spending going on. So we got to raise interest rates to slow down spending. So we, so basically they raise it to make you suffer. That's what they do. They claim to slow you down on spending. Okay. But they so smart about the economy, right? So, so what you end up doing is making inflation worse by raising interest rates. People have a hard time affording an apartment. Now people, can't even buy a home beyond which a home now is not something that the average citizen is even attaining. If you're not married, this, it's just the way it's happening now. Let's be honest with you. If you're not married or you're a single person that has a high, you know, dollar job, home ownership may not uh, be something you can even get. And if you, it's just beyond with you, that's not right. Everyone should have the opportunity to get a home. But where's the regulations from the Democrat party, but they don't want to put them in at all. So let's continue They say the demographic. Some say is too often overlooked and their concerns dismissed and saying they quote, there's never been a point where black men's issues were put front and center for any political party. It's say in a real way. That's a Mondale Robinson founder of black male voter project. He's to say too often Robinson said, can they show up to speak to black men? They say when the election is looming, but disappear after the ballots are counted. As a result, many black men feel the campaign is nothing more than transactional. They say these brothers don't see themselves represented or cared about in a political space. They say Robinson told the Hill. He said they don't hear people screaming about what's important to them. He said this is, he said could be a part of why uh, black men vote less often. Now the Mondale Robinson fella, um, he was recently on, on, on Boulé Martin and, you know, even though I agree with some things he was saying about, you know, they need to really be speaking to the grassroots a lot more, not to these, you know, 
Barton paid for people kind of, and, and they kind of took a little issue with him saying that uh, on that platform. But it's like this, you know, you, you go to Boulay Martin, you know, you know what that is. It's Democrat central Democrat shield Boulay media. You know that, but a lot of reasons black men just aren't checked in the process. Let's call it what it is. Look at what Democrats run on. They run on immigration. That doesn't benefit black men. Legal or illegal immigration does not benefit black men whatsoever. It harms black men. So it, it doesn't get black men enthusiastic to vote. What else do Democrats run on? LGBT. LGBT represents about 5% of people in the United States of America. And a lot less than that percentage would be the black community, right? So that doesn't get black men excited to vote. What else they run on? They run on abortion. Black men are not excited to go vote behind no abortion. Sorry, we're not. What else do they run on? Social programs. Social programs that black men can't get. So why should black men get up and go vote for y'all when all y'all offering is programs that black men can't even participate in at all? Black men can't get food stamps. Black men can't get welfare. Black men can't get Section 8. That's single mothers and get all that situation, right? And not black men. Democrats believe in sanctuary cities, right? Now, a sanctuary city, li li listen, listen to what a sanctuary city is. A sanctuary city, I couldn't be the president because I would lock all y'all up. You play games with me about a sanctuary city. But it says we're not going to arrest you for the federal government. We're going, we're not going to turn you in, point you out for, to the federal government when they want to deport you out of this country. But where's the sanctuary city for black men or even black people? Where is it that you're not going to? So this one group can, can violate federal law, but if a black person is violating federal law, they're getting raided. You understand what I'm saying? But you're going to hide people who are breaking federal law. Do you remember during Trump when he was doing the raids? Democrats was telling these people how to subvert our laws in this country. Now, in my opinion, every last one of them should have been arrested on conspiracy. They should have been arrested on uh, conspiring against the government, telling criminals how to get around. Uh, our laws. I mean, anybody else would have been hit with that. Nancy Pelosi and all of them was telling these people that right now they're pro immigration, the Democrats pro breaking the law. If you are people from somewhere else, the Democrats talk about racism, but they talk about it just to stir you up, but they don't do nothing about it. They just want you to come out there and vote for them. And one thing black men have seen time and time and time and time again, we talking about black men or young black kids like Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown. Uh, 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 you see sisters like Rakia Boyd and Corin Gaines and Charlena Lyles and, you know, George Floyd. And you just name them, uh, Breonna Taylor and all these different people that just over the years. Okay. The Democrats have not done anything, but yet we, they talk about systemic racism. They talk about equity all day, but the Democrats is the one that champion themselves as the, as the, the party to fight racism. And then when they get into office, nothing happens. Nothing happens to the race soldier. Nothing happens about qualified immunity. They don't, they don't put no laws on the books to even protect black people. The Democrats got in office Biden. And what did he do? He went in and they did a bill to protect the Asian community. The biggest, I can't even say it's a slap in the face, the biggest punch in the face that he gave the black community and definitely black men because the police, when they do, uh, uh, kill people, they kill more black men. They don't do it to the women. They do it. You know, they do it more to the men. They jail black men more 53% of the exonerations in this country is black men. Lock, that means that means that you're locking black men up for some things they didn't even do when it comes to a uh, uh, murder, when it comes to, you know, violating people, black men are getting exonerated all over the place. They lead in exonerations, black men losing 20 years, 30 years, 40 years of their life. 
the Democrats haven't done nothing about it, but the Democrats parade themselves coming to our churches, try to hug our children, putting their hand on our shoulder. Oh, well, you vote for me and I'm going to help take care of this issue. And they do nothing. Then when you hold a foot to the fire about them doing nothing, what do they tell you? They gaslight you. That's more offensive than anything. They gaslight you and say, well, what do you think the Republicans are going to do for you? That is even, that's even worse than what you've done when you start bringing up the Republicans. We're talking about you. Black folks vote has been going to you for over half a century, not the Republican party. So why are you bringing them up? That, that reminds me like uh, of like a child, like my little girl. When I tell, if I tell her, Hey, why did you do this and that and the third? Well, it wasn't just, well, it was, it was my friends too. They did it too. It, I'm not talking about what they did. I'm talking about what you did. They never want to take responsibility for what they've done to the black community. And black men are, are looking at this and saying, nah, man, I'm good, bro. I'm good. Either I'm gonna vote for Trump or I'm going to sit it out. That's what a lot of brothers are saying. And it's not even, they like Republicans either. Cause that's another gaslighting thing they try to do. Oh, you black men just want to be Republicans. No, they really don't. They talk, they like some of Trump's policies, some of them. And, and, and if they like Trump's policies, if he don't be in it, they may say, sure, I'll just sit it out. I'm good. The thing is the Democrat party is starting to realize they don't own the black vote. You don't own it. It's not yours. See every year that the civil rights generation, you know, life is happening. They go and see Jesus. You got to deal with us and those votes aren't being replaced. When those people pass away, they're not getting new voters. And that's the problem. They invested all their time into the immigrant community. And that was an epic fail too, because the majority of the people that you bring in over here can't vote for you. We can, but they can't. Then you're giving resources to people who didn't even fight for this country, build this country, anything. You're giving all the resources to them while black men get nothing. At one point in time in this country, you could drive around and you see black men building roads, bridges, black men on roofs, black men working all kinds of construction. Good luck finding black men on construction today. Why? Because they systemically removed black men out of these jobs. When Trump was in office and he was raiding these construction sites, guess who got the jobs right after that? Black men. That's why a lot of black men like Trump because they can go get some jobs when these places get raided by ICE. See, Democrats, your policy harmed black men in the economy. If you, you, because you have no problem with black men being criminals because you allow criminality to run amok so much that they're walking in the stores, grabbing merchandise and walking out. Why? Because they don't have no freaking jobs. So they, they doing criminality in your cities. Criminality runs amok. Black men don't like criminality either. They want their communities to be safe. Black men have to literally go take their families and go move to the white side of town to actually have some sort of peace and law and order. Then them folks are like, why are you black people moving over here? Because y'all took all the resources over here and y'all make sure law and order go on over here because the Democrats don't make sure it go on over here. Well, let's continue. Let's say in 2022, say a poll by KFF and the Grio found that black voters are not only more likely to be older, they say, but 57% of voters, they say, are women, they say, who have identified some of their top issues as the economy, racism, and gun violence. Let me tell you about a, a racism. No president, and I mean none, can get rid of racism. None. Martin Luther King said a long time ago that you cannot legislate the affairs of the heart. You can't but you could create jail time for it though. I can say that they could criminalize racism. If they want, they could, they can criminalize anything that they want. Trust me. They just don't want to criminalize racism because if you criminalize racism, it's going to be a mass incarceration of them in this country because they can't help themselves. 
Now they say these concerns say don't differ much. They say from black men's concerns. They say a Wakenya Clayton, a Mississippi State Office Director for the Southern Poverty Law Center, said black men are suffering from higher unemployment rates. Black men are struggling to figure out how to feed their families, and they are figuring out how to show up and be supportive of their community. Clan uh, told the Hill. They said, but the Democratic Party, they say, is not speaking to those issues. Instead, Democrats' focus recently has been on issues such as abortion and LGBT rights. Uh, said a Darren Harris, former chief of staff for former Representative Karen Bass, and a candidate for California State Senate. And said, but Republicans are speaking to the issues on the minds of black men. And saying that's why they've been doing better with the demographic in recent elections. They say while more than 60% of eligible black voters cast their ballots in 2020, they say that dropped in 2022. And former President Donald Trump saw his support among black voters increase from 8% in 2016 to 12% in 2020. They say, according to exit polling from Edison Research, they say, well, the Republicans do well in their messaging around the economy, adding that inflation is still soaring and the minimum wage law has not yet passed. Now, that's another thing. Democrats talk about minimum wage and it should be $15. Well, not all Democrats. Let me not say that. And more so the progressive wing of Democrats that say that $15 minimum wage. And, you know, I, I think, you know, like I said before, I think East, Co like California, New York, $20 minimum wage, Southern states, $15 minimum wage. Hands down. I agree with that because the economy is so horrible. The inflation is so horrible. People can't make it off no $7 an hour job no more. It just, they can't. I mean, come on, be real. These, these politicians don't, don't make no $7 an hour. They, they, they live real good in this country. Now they say Republicans, they are talking about the economy and talking about upward mobility as they within their uh, communities. And he said, and I think that message resonates very strongly with black men. Yes, it resonates strongly. Let me tell you why. Black men have discovered that working for yourself, the sky's the limit. See, working for the folks, you got to be dealing with racism. You got to be dealing with these uh, dudes on the job who don't even have the same education as you, but yet can come in and be over you, trying to talk to you any kind of way. You know, you can, no matter how much work you do, how much overtime, you would never get high up in these people's companies. And if you do get there, you got to shuck and jive and all kinds of other stuff to get there. Sell yourself out. A lot of black men, and I've talked to many black men, they enjoy working for themselves and creating their own businesses. Now, Republicans, they push more business. They're pro-business. They're pro-lower of taxes. If you are in business as a black man, that's music to your ears, lower taxes. See, when a person working a job, they don't care about no tax rates. They don't care because they just take out they, what is that they check and that's it. That's not even a concern for them. So when you, they hear you talking about taxes and, and, and trust me, I lived at every level. I've been an employee. And when I was an employee, I didn't even think about no taxes, even care about it. I'm like, I actually, I was trying to get a refund. Right. And at this level, when I'm talking about business, I'm looking at tax rates. I'm looking at, you know, different ways of, cause this how it works at least with my company, the more we save, the more we can give to the people that work with us. You understand what I'm saying? I don't do that. Well, that's save the money and don't give it to our people that work with us. Cause I, I hate corporate America. That's why I would never have my company model the way corporate America do people wrong. No, that's just not the way it is. So there are many black men who have their own businesses. So Republicans sound very good to us. What are we hearing from Joe Biden? If you make over 400,000, I'm gonna raise taxes. Well, let's talk about it in the area of business. $400,000 is that's nothing. That's nothing. And that's going to target more small business, small business people who are black men and black women. So that's not what you want to hear. Actually, they, they just came out and said that the new tax rates should be for people over 1 million and up based on inflation. Not even the 250,000 they still have now. The Democrats just want you to be employees. And they say, oh, we creating jobs. They don't mean good paying jobs. If all of you are working at Walmart, they happy with that. If you're working at McDonald's, they happy with that. The Democrats are not out here trying to push you up to 
higher, you know, pay. They're not pushing that. If the Democrats were really trying to help you, they would say, we creating programs where you can go get free uh, 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 skilled trades. We're going to put the skilled trades back in public school. So you could come out of school. You're going to be halfway there to be a plumber, electrician, uh, uh, auto body repair, uh, auto mechanic. Um, you know, like they say, you had the nursing programs and all kinds of different things like that, that you had, if the Democrats are really about trying to help people get great jobs and, and using government to invest in the people in America, they took all the manufacturing out of this country. You can't even get a freaking manufacturing job. They are talking about then AI coming in, AI going to take a lot of your low uh, pay jobs too. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying versus Republicans are talking about business and creating your own job. And and a lot of black people during the pandemic created their own job, black men and black women. So since you're a black man and black woman has created your own job and you're happy, you make your own schedule. You work long as you want. You can take vacation when you want. It's beautiful. Some of you right now that's listening to this podcast in another country right now, working on your computer, you, you, something you could have never done working for these people. If you never created your own business, the Democrats not talking like that. They're not talking about upper mobility. They talking about immigration, giving all the resources to, to, the, to those people. So those people come in and do what the McDonald's jobs, the, the, the Walmart jobs. Oh, they'll do the construction jobs and brothers can't get a job no more. Brothers can't go work back in the day. If you didn't have a job, you know, you came out of jail. They would say, Hey, you ain't got a job and hey, you can go work construction. That was always available to go work construction. Even if you came out of jail, that's not available for you no more. Why? Because they brought all these people over here and all those people are working those jobs that used to be for the black men would go work. So when Trump talking about, I'm getting them on out of here, black men like, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm good with that one. What Biden's doing, Biden's going to keep bringing them in, keep bringing them in, keep bringing them in. So it's right there. See, Boulay Martin, he don't talk about immigration. I noticed that he never talk about immigration. He don't talk. Why don't y'all go ask Boulay Martin why he never talks about immigration? He never talks about Chicago like that, about the people coming in and taking resources from black people in Chicago. He don't talk about that. You know why? Cause he has tight cause he's immigrants to his family. That's why he don't talk about it. He talked about everything else, but how that harms black people. But let's continue. They say that it's not only resonating with black voters, but black leaders as well. So in 2020, it's a representative Byron Donalds that say was elected to Congress and was a candidate uh, to house speaker, uh, last month. It's a Tim Scott, which, uh, Tim Scott, they say the only black Republican in the upper chamber launched the presidential campaign, which failed because they don't respect Tim Scott, please. You know, <laughs> you know, I, I could say something that kind of offends some of y'all too. Yeah, I, I know it's going to apply to all brothers. Please don't take what I say, apply to all brothers. But, you know, back in the day, you used to say, you need to be leery of a black man and, and shave his mustache. Be leery of that. Why? And he smiling, shave his mustache, and he smiles so much in front of them people, you know. It's like, what, why you trying to, cause you know why they would do that and say that because those particular black men is trying to show massa. I'm the least threatening. So let me shave all my facial hair off my face and look like a boy as much as possible and smile and just show I'm not threatening massa. See, I, you know, when you put wetty beards and all that, you look a little bit more intimidating to massa understand. And I'm not saying because I don't, Hey, I shave my, I ain't, I'm just telling you what the old people used to say, not continuing. They say some states as leaders, they say who have identified as Democrats changed their party affiliation in July, Georgia state representative Misha Maynard, who represents part of Atlanta and say defected to the Republican party, which means defected. <laughs> That's an interesting word defected. Like you're defecting, uh, from the United States military to a foreign military, which means defected. There ain't no defected. She chose to walk away from the Democrat party to the Republican party. That's her choice. And they say in September, Dallas mayor, Eric Johnson announced he was switching his affiliation from the Democrat party to the Republican party. They say New York times and Siena college uh, poll to suggest and found that 22% of black voters in six battleground states said they would support uh, former president Trump in next year's election. 
They said, but these numbers they say are doubtful to some. Uh, they say the idea that 20% of black men are going to support Trump is that that was born out of Trump saying that he's going to get 20%. No, no, no. Because the more I'm, t- I'm telling y'all, I talk to black men and black men have told me they are supporting Trump, especially all, all my business black men. They're supporting Trump. There are, they're not, they're, they're, they're not dealing with Biden because Biden's policies harm business owners who are black men who are trying to feed their families. The Biden policies, in my opinion, is no different than Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter's presidency, if you research it, was hell on America. Same thing with Biden's policies. It's hell on America and the people in their pockets. That's what was going on. See, and then y'all try to use Trump. Oh, Trump's so bad. Trump did look, you can't use Trump no more. Biden is the president now. You can't point at Trump. You said you were better than him in 2020. Okay. Now you got to be in office. And we got to see who were you better economy wise. No, you're horrible. You're, you're extremely horrible for the economy. You're horrible for the stock market. You're horrible. Then y'all came in here with all, when all that trying to remove soldiers out the army because they didn't want to take you, you know, uh, you know what I'm talking about. And now you send letters to them about, oh, you'll change their, their discharge paperwork. And you ask them now to come back to the army. Oh, so you kick the soldiers out because, because they made a decision about their particular health. And now you want to backtrack. I mean, if I was some soldiers, I wouldn't do nothing. I'm like, nah, I'm good. Uh, now they said that the same thing they said about former president, George W. Bush, 20% of black men supporting Republicans. They said never bears out. Well, well y'all say that that was a different time. You know, I remember George W. Bush was president. Is trust me, we had a little bit more normalcy in America during the time of, of President George W. Bush versus today. I'm saying today is I wish we had the times that we had back then. That's it. Robin said polls that such as these are flawed. It's say in part because the questions being asked are not framed in culturally competent ways. What do you mean culturally competent ways? It, it, why do you need a culturally competent way to ask a question? That's like saying black people are dumb. Like I get so tired of these so-called educated black people. I get tired of you because you think you just know everything, Pat, everybody, right? There was a guy that uh, was on Kim Iverson's show. If you, if you know who she is, she's a journalist. And this guy went on her show. He was from a black lives matter chapter. And he said that he was going to endorse Trump and he didn't like the way America was going. And, and he said he was better for the economy, et cetera. So this guy, that just expressed that on Kim Iverson's show. I watched it. Kim Iverson actually treated him nice. She respected him. Okay. He goes on Boule Martin's show and Boule Martin just being sassy like he is. And he's just talking down on the guy. Clearly the guy don't know certain things. I could see it. Right. But I would not, cause most people don't know what you know, especially if you don't do that every day, but they know how they know how their pocketbook is feeling. No, they don't know all the bills. No, they don't know the history of everything. They don't care. They, all they know about is the food is high. One thing I know is that the gas is high. Interest rates is high. My checks is not getting bigger. Hey, when the other guy was in the office, I ain't had that problem. That's what they know. Who freaking cares about it? He passed the bill. He gave this amount of money to HBCUs. If y'all tell me something about HBCUs, I'm like, I don't care. The majority of black America don't go to HBCUs. I'm talking about the whole black America. It's only a small group of people that goes to any kind of college in our community. It's not the majority. So say he did something for black people. He gave billions of dollars to HBCUs. I'd rather you give billions of dollars to the black community. Matter of fact, take that same billions of dollars you so-called gave to HBCUs and start reparations. How about that? And benefit all black people. That's what we can do. I'd rather you say, I'm not giving nothing to the HBCUs, but we're going to start giving billions of dollars to start reparations payments. I'm good with that. I'm good with it. Because you know what? You're giving all this money to HBCUs. Well, what are we getting out of it? What are we getting? It's not like we can't, we can't even go to the HBCUs for free. You get all this government money and we can't go to the HBCUs for free. What's the point of getting all that government money in and we can't go for free. Then some of these HBCUs, uh, they, they not doing right by the money. Some of the, some of them, uh, you know, got, 
Trust me, it is, it's a mess at some of these places. Oh, we weren't supposed to say nothing about that. I'd rather you take that money and start reparations. But, but we supposed to go out and vote, vote for them. Okay. Let's continue. Let's continue to say, say, for instance, they say that black men might say they agree with more public safety, which in many political spaces, they say equate to more support for po uh, police officers. But they say, if you do a deep dive with the demographic of black men, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. If you say they need more police officers, because their definition of public safety is that they need to be policed like white people. That's a, according to Robinson and say in order to police black men, like white people, you need far less police officers. So the idea is actually closer to defunding the police. No, 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 you're wrong. You're wrong. Black people have no problem with police officers. If they are doing the right thing, we're not saying you need less police officers. Every country need police officers. Come on now. That's a public safety issue. Yes. Black men are saying, treat me the same like you treat white people. We're not saying defund the police. Nobody's saying that crap. Okay. Now I say still the Biden campaign is has tried to share the wins. The president has made by launching radio ads across black owned stations in battleground states. Say, but Harris has said the type of engagement along with barbershop stops is overplayed. He said, folks want to see the Biden campaign engaged in their community. I think that day one, right after they were sworn in, they should have been setting up grassroots captains in some of these targeted areas just to maintain a relationship with the voter. He said, what we really get is say to black men is old fashioned knocking on doors, meeting voters where they're at. He said, that can be through phone banking, that could be through text messaging. He said, I think the folks are looking for the white house to have a deeper relationship with folks. No, 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 no. See, uh, this Rondell guy, Rondell that's doing all I'm, I'm quoting you Rondell listening to you. They're going to lose black folks. Don't want you calling their phone. Black folks don't want you Democrats even texting their phone. Black folks don't want you knocking on their door either. You don't have to do any of that. You don't have to do anything. Just do, just do what's right for black people. That's all you got to do. You do not have to go to nobody's house. You rather do all of that instead of actually doing something for black people. You understand? It doesn't make sense. Y'all, y'all, y'all just like keep following the same recipe for, for losing. It, it don't make sense. And they say, but another issue is that Clinton said, said they keep popping up. They say in the, is the, the savior complex from leaders. They often say we make the mistake of going out into the community and talking at people being accusatory in the tone when we are speaking to them. And so we have to stop approaching communities and say, with this savior complex and really get to the heart of what's going on. Say the problem is very seldom the people, but the promise that people is they have made is that they have been defaulted on. And say Harris said Democrats and Biden in particular need to up their messaging ahead of 2024 if they want to mobilize black men. Well, see, the thing is y'all don't even talk to black men. Y'all won't even, look, look, y'all won't even do nothing different. Look, if vice president Harris wanted to talk to me and wanted to do a sit down interview with me on African diaspora, I do it with her. I sure would. And I will talk to her about issues about black men and black people. And what are they going to do for black people? And I would, and I would not cut no punches about anything when I'm going to ask when it comes to that. And I was, I would tell her, say, listen, vice president Harris, I, I don't do the all lives matter thing. I'm talking about black America. That's all we're going to talk about here today. Black America and black America is suffering. Black America don't have nothing. That COVID-19 bill was a punch in the face to our community because we've been talking about an anti-black hate crime bill. If the Biden Harris administration had done an anti-black hate crime bill, they would not be in this position right now. They would be cruising to reelection. It'd be no issue, no problem. All you got to do is for black people. And then this is the messed up part y'all do for all these other groups and none of these other groups come to save you. Where's the Asian community right now? Why are they lining up, making sure they register to vote, to go vote Democrat? Why aren't they campaigning for Biden and Harris right now? They see all these other groups y'all invest in. They so ungrateful to y'all, but, but y'all don't want to do nothing for black folk, black folk. You do, you do just a little bit for us and man, we cool with you. Y'all did the civil rights act 
and the Voting Rights Act. And look how much loyalty you got from black people over half a century, literally, for those two bills. These other groups, you do something for them, they want more and more and more. They're not appreciated to nothing that you ever do for them. And that's why black folks are saying now, yeah, go holler at them other groups. We good. We good. Because y'all don't do nothing for us. Y'all can kill us about black America. So, okay, y'all y'all go. We, 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 let's see how you're going to work with us, right? Sit, sitting it out. Oh, we both on the other side. Let's see if you can win with these other groups. Now, they said, they quote, said the Democrats have an easy job. They say they have the base already. They say it's just like uh, brand up those issues and promote those issues that are plaguing our community and show up. Uh, they said black men, they say are more critical to the Democratic Party. They say Harris said, they say in part because of the promises they make but fail to keep. They say it's not that Democrats are losing black men to the Republican Party. Is it adding that black men, they say don't trust Republicans. What? Why are you speak? We don't trust. Listen, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. Most black men don't trust the white man period. Okay. But we know we got to deal with him. So we don't trust a Democrat. We don't trust a Republican for the most part. We don't trust now one of them because we know how, listen, black men know how the white man gets down. Oh, we know, but unfortunately we got to deal with him at times. Right? So, it's not that we troll the Republican. Oh, we don't trust him. But then we trust this Democrat white man. When we have seen more racism from the Democrat white man, come on now. Now he continues to say they don't trust Republicans in part because of their struggles to speak on racial justice issues. What? We never needed Republicans or Democrats to talk about our issues. We never needed nobody. Everybody comes in because they want to come in on our situation. We don't need no coalition. I told y'all that we are fine by ourselves. Because then these other people, what they do is when they come in on our situation, well, we were marching with you. Did we ask you? Did we say, please come march with us? Please, we need you out there. No, you showed up out there. You know what I'm saying? Man, please. Well, so, okay, if something again happened to us, nobody else show up. We got it. I promise you we got it. But you couldn't help yourself. You're still going to show up. I said, black men say, are just going to start sitting at home and just watch the polls. The Democrats are not giving us and say what we want. and say Republicans. He said, Repu both parties are racist, sir. He said, Republicans are racist. Really? So, so if, if, if the Democrats was not the racist ones at all, right? They were just not racist. Why don't we have reparations? California is a Democrat state and they don't even get reparations over there. They did commission. But then they looked at the people there. They don't, they don't, they're not good with reparations. But it don't even matter what the people say, right? Because Democrats have a supermajority in California. They can do reparations at any time. They know they have done a study in California to prove how black people were, were affected. And they still haven't done reparations. So please, please. But they'll give money to, to, to everybody else coming across that border but they won't pay reparations. No, no, both parties are racist. And that's that just that simple. But y'all could just try to analyze black men until you talk to real black men. I'm talking about real black men, not boule black men. I'm talking about real black men, not black men at the luncheons, not them black men. I'm talking about real black men out here. And you know, that's, that's something I, I said, I'm, I'm going to talk to brother Sharif about, I'm going to get out here and start, start talking to these brothers and, and, and let you hear them in real time. Talk about it. not me influence them. Just, just put a microphone in their face and say, Hey, what do you think about Trump Biden 2024? Well, what do you think about that? You're going to, you're going to go, you're going to vote for Biden Trump or you're going to sit it out and let black men talk. Yeah. I'm going to talk to brother Sharif about that, but we're going to, we're going to have to get out there and start doing that because uh, I want you to hear from the brothers themselves, not from me talking. I want you to hear from them. Now, I, I just want their opinion. I, I, it's not a good opinion. It's not a bad opinion. It's just their opinion because, you know, the mainstream media won't put a microphone in, in the average brother's face, but we'll do it. So, yeah, I'm going to talk to him about that. And, uh, you know, so we can get out there and start doing that uh, uh, not in not too long. So, because um, y'all have no clue about what black men talk about whatsoever.